the first player that we introduce in the NFL 100 all-time team, Jim Brown from the Cleveland Browns. He led the NFL in rushing in eight of his nine seasons. He retired as the NFL's all-time leading rusher and led the Browns to the 1964 National Football League Championship. This is Jim Brown, the most devastating ball carrier in the history of football. Considered by most experts as the greatest pullback ever to play the game, Jimmy's harder to bring down than a wild steer. And yes, he is with us here tonight to kick off our NFL 100 all-time team. What does it mean to you being part of a team that is considered the best over a 100-year span of professional football? It was at my age. To be relevant is not too bad. Rich, if this show had been called the NFL One instead of 100, <laughs> yeah, right. we might have the same guest. <laughs> I, I think universally, Bill, once you watch the tape of Jim Brown, there's almost a little bit of an awe and a little bit of an intimidation factor that this guy stood alone. He really did, and he only played nine years. I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, Jim, I've admired you for my entire life. And certainly when I was there, coach of the Cleveland Browns, um, it was such a blessing for me to get to know you. And you had such an impact on my coaching career, it taught me a lot. In observing you as a player, you were obviously the, the greatest player, could have played in any era, probably at any position, really. You know, could have played tight end, running back, uh, defense. I mean, you could have played anything <laughs> and did. There's nobody other than you that should be the first person in this group. I grew up in Ohio, and I heard stories about you from the time I was born. And watching the tapes of you play now, I kept writing down one thing. It looks like a dad playing football in the backyard with his kids, and the kids are wrapped around his legs and you're sort of dragging, and you certainly don't want to hurt the poor little kids. That's what it looked like. It was like a different sort of being was playing football with some young kids out on the field. And on top of that, then Jim would outrun anybody who was chasing him. So it was the power, the balance, and then just pure speed. He was faster than everybody. And the wiggle. We're about to add another member to our set right here, second running back to be revealed. He's the all-time leading rusher in the history of the National Football League. He is Emmett Smith, the Cowboy and MVP of Super Bowl 28, a member of the all-decade team of the 1990s. Emmett Smith ran for an NFL record 18,355 yards in 226 career games. Emmett Smith has eclipsed Walter Payton as the NFL's all-time rushing leader. How are you, Emmett? Good to see you here. I'm good, Rich. How are you, man? Well, I would love to say I'm as happy as you, but you're the one sitting next to Jim Brown, not yeah. only physically right here, but your plaques are right next to each other on the NFL 100 all-time team wall. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. Well, I mean, to be right here with the legend himself, man who inspires so many other players to come from behind him and he paved the way for a lot of us and uh, whether it's passing the torch from him to Walter and then down the line I mean it's just so many great players that have come behind Jim and he set the standard pretty high. You know it's really interesting yeah, right. this used to be a running back league I mean when I was it growing up. It still is. It still is. Well, I, okay all right well, there's, there's a couple of quarterbacks Absolutely. making some money when out there. When things get bad y'all turn to the run again just <laughs> calm things down so it still is. <laughs> but don't you remember growing up and it was the running backs that really were the the star attraction in many ways in the National Football League you know our, our heroes were always running backs I guess back <laughs> in the day. Yeah. I'm truly enamored by the way that you can set up blocks and run the football on such a consistent basis. Tell us how you ran the ball. Just, just tell me what you saw. To me, it's always about playing chess against a defensive player, trying to get the defensive player to be undisciplined. Force him to make a decision that's really not the right decision. And that is standing and pressing the line of scrimmage or pressing the run play as far as I can to get him out of position, to make him overcommit. You're the one that 
that I just marvel at the way you make the blocks for the linemen. Even if they're not good blocks, you make them good blocks and then find the space and get through it. And then, you know, you have such good pad level through the line of scrimmage that you're hard to tackle once you get your pads down. I'm not six feet. No, I know. I'm only five nine and a half, and when I'm running, I'm about five six. <laughs> so I shrink. What did you think of the way he ran, Jim? This guy's a warrior, man. That attitude, that mental attitude that uh, you must have to be really great. But he was the epitome of that because he always had to probably hear being not as large as someone else or maybe not as fast as someone else, but that determination, unbelievable. He's always got to move some kind of a move to continue the play. And it's so valuable because, you know, you look at his size, and he's kidding about not being 6'4". He didn't need all of that. He used that size and every doggone thing else to be able to gain yards. Let's add some more names to this list of running backs. Eric Dickerson is the latest member of the NFL 100 all-time team. 1984, he ran for a record 2,105 yards. That is the NFL single-season rushing record. He surpassed 1,000 yards in each of his first seven seasons. Dickerson was a six-time Pro Bowler and five-time All-Pro. That's a nice piece of running showing you. Look at this and take that. He had a cornerback trying to get to him, but he just put it down into another gear. That's fun to watch. What'd you think about Eric Dickerson? What'd you like loved about him, his game, loved Emmett? Him. Loved him. I could never run as pretty as Eric. <laughs> <laughs> never fall as gracefully as Eric. <laughs> but love watching him run. I mean, you talk about somebody that had a running style that was phenomenal and light. And his feet just were like pitty-pat, pitty-pat, pitty-pat. And just acceleration and speed and grace. I mean, just awesome. Just pure awesome. I love watching. Had him up in my in my high school locker. <laughs> had him. Had Marcus. I had Jim. I had Walter. Had all of them in my high school locker because I wanted to be all of them in one. Let's get to one more guy to join us here in studio if we can. His name is Barry Sanders. I think we've heard of him. He's pretty damn good when he runs the football. Amassed 15,269 rushing yards and 109 total touchdowns in his stellar 10-year career. The six-time All-Pro was the NFL Offensive Player of the Year in 1994 and 1997, and he joins us right here at NFL Films. Sometimes you just got to look to the heavens and say, wow. When God created Barry Sanders, even he didn't know what he made. Barry Sanders, welcome to the all-time team. Great to be here. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. This is pretty cool. Do you have any idea how many rushing yards are uh, at this table? 26.1 miles combined of rushing yards. <laughs> so we, we run in a marathon oh, right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. You run in a marathon. Well, I guess we need to talk a little bit about the elephant in the room right now, the season in which you went for 2,000 yards in a single season. Do you know whose defense you topped 2,000 yards against in week 17 of that year? Uh, I do. I have a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't mine. <laughs> that guy over there. Here's what I tell him. <laughs> when Barry Sanders gets the ball, everybody's at the point of attack. The right corner, the right end, the free safety, the nose tackle, the left corner, the left one. Everybody's at the point of attack because he could hit every spot on the field. And I don't care where he started, that didn't mean anything either. No. <laughs> and then when he got there, you better be ready to tackle him. They were stout. No, they were stout. It was, it was a good game. Barry Sanders goes for another rushing title, needs 131 to hit the 2,000 mark. We knew going in, playing against Coach Parcells and, and Coach Belichick, they didn't, they didn't give us much. I mean, we had to earn everything. You know, that's the kind of runner that I, I was and growing up, um, watching so many other great players. I mean, all of my favorite running backs. This guy right and I would, here too. You know, my, my dad would always just be talking about something, and he, and he, you know, he'd go off into how Jim Brown was the greatest. You know, didn't matter what he was talking about. You know? <laughs> First, I want to say hello to the greatest running back that ever lived, the number one running back we ever lived. He's not with us today. I think he's with his family in Los Angeles, G Mr. Jim Brown. So I want to say hello to him, Jim. 
And now I want to introduce you to the third best running back that ever lived, Barry Sanders. You know, you two guys set the record for retiring too soon. That's true. You know, out of everybody you want to talk about in this league, retiring too soon, I think these two guys are the leaders. Yes. Well, I think he retired too soon. I think I was right on time. <laughs> <laughs> you hang around. I tell people all, all the time, I mean, if this guy here would not have retired, he probably would have been the first 20,000-yard running back in the National Ball League. Period. I still twenty thousand. Well, well. I still believe that to this day. Do you think about that, Barry? I don't, know. Do, I don't you, know. do you ever stop and think about that? You know, I was in my tenth season. Yep. Um, I, I I know I certainly had at least another season left. I mean, in this game, who, who knows, right? But yeah, I mean, at the same time, I I just I can't complain about my career. And you know, maybe had you shipped me off to you know New England or something like that, you know, maybe you know maybe I could have played played another ten years or whatever, but. And be in the company of these men. I mean, I, I just can't complain about that. Let's add some more names to our NFL 100 all-time team monument wall here at NFL Films. The next member of the running back class is O.J. Simpson. The 1973 NFL MVP became the first member of the 2,000-yard single-season rushing club. He was also a five-time All-Pro selection. I know for a lot of people who will be watching this show, they'll know the story. Um, but he was America's hero. I mean, he was on all the commercials. He was the guy that was front and center for the National Football League. So this was a pretty stunning fall from grace, right? Uh, but I'm going to talk just about football for a minute because 2,000 yards in a 14-game season is off the charts. And in my mind, there really was only one player that you could really compare him to, someone that size, with that amount of wiggle, with those moves and that speed, and it's Jim Brown. Tremendous speed, tremendous acceleration. Uh, not a hard hitter as such, but uh, the track thing and the football thing was kind of like his M.O. Not moves because he was an ugly runner. We used to, and, 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 Don't say that. <laughs> Come on now. What about Dickerson and Gail Sears? Grace. They, no, yeah, they're they pretty definitely runs, graceful. Pretty yeah, definitely graceful. It was herky jerky runner with tremendous speed, but a great back, you know, just a tremendous back. It's interesting you mentioned Gail Sayers, Jim Brown, because Gail Sayers is the latest member to be revealed in the NFL 100 all time team. Give me 18 inches of daylight. That's all I need. The 1965 Rookie of the Year, who scored a then rookie record 22 touchdowns. The five time All Pro was previously named to the NFL's 50th and 75th anniversary teams. As the saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch him now. Sayers, NFL Rookie of the Year. A one man gale. Dashing 85 dazzling yards on the longest punt return of the season. Here he is, Galloping Gale, carrying the mail. This is his sixth touchdown of the game. To me, he seems like one of those guys that we often say is like before his time. The kind of athlete he was, you know, the kind of cuts he made. He fits in that category of running back to almost looks like he's doing something else because it's, it's almost like ballet because it's so graceful <laughs> and it just catches your eye a certain right, yeah. way. like. God, this guy's playing football, but look how graceful and fluid his movements are. We're about to get the first instance of what we're going to see throughout this six-episode series. Some members of the team revealed via Bellistrator, starting with Dutch Clark. Dutch Clark was a charter member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, a six-time unanimous All-Pro and member of the 1935 Lions championship team. Dutch is one of the uh, great two-way players and really one of the most versatile players that ever played the game. This is Dutch uh, in the single wing formation as a tailback, power football. Uh, he was a, a very elusive runner uh, and also could run with power. You can see a hard guy to tackle. 
Uh, a good passer in his day, uh, not to the level of you know the expertise that we are accustomed to now, and the ball was a lot different, but he was effective to throw in the ball uh, as well as everything else that he did. And it was a two-way era. It's a, just a lot different than what, what we're used to seeing today. Being a, being a productive player, again, on defense, uh, here he comes. Did the referees the sell ice cream during the game like, or not? I, like I just plus fours. <laughs> I like the plus fours. Yeah. That was very good. Moving on a decade for another two-way player coach, Steve Van Buren, the four-time NFL rushing champion known by a couple nicknames, Wham Bam and Super Sonic Steve. Van Buren scored 77 touchdowns in only 83 career games. When he retired in 1951, he held the NFL's single season and career rushing records. Well, Steve Van Buren was another versatile player, uh, cut by his high school football team. Uh, came back and eventually played as a senior, went on to LSU, and this guy was hard to tackle. He ran with a lot of power. These outside plays like this, he, he'd start them outside, but once there was some daylight and he could turn up, uh, this is where he was effective. He was effective going north and south, oh. made a lot of tough yards, carried a ball, you know, 30, 35 times a game. Good look here at the Eagles, uh, true T formation. This is really Van Buren right here. Good straight ahead, inside runner, ran with good pad level. You can see him getting his pads down through the line of scrimmage. He was a mudder. More Seems like mud. every one of these games we watch is in the <laughs> More mud. mud. As soon as there's room to turn up, he's turning up. Good speed, not breakaway speed, but just hard to tackle. I don't think you want to play against Steve Van Buren. One more guy to introduce through the Bellistrator, and I think fans of this show, when you watch throughout the six weeks, you are going to see a specific affinity Coach Belichick has for some Baltimore Colts. And we start on that front with two-time NFL champion Lenny Moore. 1964 is when Lenny Moore became the first player in NFL history to score 20 touchdowns in a single season. You know, Rich, the versatility of this player is, is just remarkable. He's the only player in the National Football League in the 40-40 club. 48 touchdowns receiving and 63 touchdowns rushing. Started his career as a running back, later on moved to wide receiver. He could have played in any era at either spot. This is uh, Lenny playing uh, wide receiver here, coming on the reverse. That's Unitas handing him the ball and then just watch him go. The gliding, you know, Marcus Allen type, just easy. Nobody catches this guy. I wouldn't call him a power runner, but he runs with good power. This is pretty impressive here. He had deceptive power for a 200 pound guy, pound for pound. He was a strong, tough runner, and he knew where the goal line was. He did a real good job of getting the ball into the end zone. I hate to think what Lombardi was saying on that one. Grab it. He has big plays in every game. And again, they're inside, they're outside, they're in the passing game, they're off tackle. Now here he is on the draw play. It's all over now. Let me see you. I mean, it's just forget wow. about it. I mean, that's just right up the middle. You're not catching it. Just take guy. it and run right up the middle. I think he's a little bit underrated. I mean, I don't know how you can be on the top 100 team and be underrated. He might be a little bit underrated. But it's uh, good to have all of us here again with Bill Belichick on our NFL 100 all-time team show. That adds another member that can be just known in one word, sweetness. Walter Payton is a member of this team. There's no shock at all. When he retired, he had the rushing record that you eventually broke, Emmett. 16,726 rushing yards in his years as a Chicago Bear, a nine-time Pro Bowler, a member of the Super Bowl 20 champion Bears and is in the hearts and minds of Chicago sports fans every single day. Quick pitch to Walter, looking for the record, cuts back, he's got it! He's out of the 25 and the 26 yard line. Walter Payton becomes the National Football League all-time leading rusher surpassing Jim Brown, and that's the equivalent to Hank Aaron breaking Babe Ruth's all-time home run record. Jim Brown, I want to give you the floor first on Walter Payton. The first time that you noticed him was when? The first time I saw him on television, I almost jumped out of my seat. 
because I saw the greatness in that one particular play. And I've always felt that having heart and determination was a necessary ingredient. And I always said no one had a bigger heart than Walter. That sucker would get out to you. And he wasn't dead large. Determination and his strength and agility and speed, and acceleration was all there. And Walter had it all. Work ethic was, was paramount for him. He was definitely driven. He wanted to outwork anybody and everybody. I remember as a kid seeing him run some hill. And for me, that was just inspiration to see a guy working like that. To use any means necessary to get past a defensive player. Watching that and watching his highlight tapes and his training regimen, those are things that stand out to me the most. I mean, his heart was as big as the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I'm serious. Obviously, his running was incredible. His vertical jump had to be about 60. When you saw him on the goal line go over the top, it was, it was just insane. I would say the biggest treat for me was playing in Detroit, playing against the Bears twice a year. He had retired, obviously, but he would come out and watch the games and knowing that, that Walter Payton was in the stands <laughs> um, <laughs> watching you play the Bears. Um, and so I always say, um, you know, for a lot of my great games against the Bears, you can blame Walter Payton because just, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was such great motivation for me. A member of the 1940s All-Decade Team, Marion Motley is now on the NFL 100 All-Time Team. The mammoth Motley, 238 pounds of football dynamite. Motley football's version of the atomic bomb. A year before Jackie Robinson signed with the Dodgers, Marion Motley signed with the Cleveland Browns along with fellow Hall of Famer Bill Willis. Motley averaged 5.7 yards per carry, and he was a unanimous All-Pro selection in 1948 and in 1950. I'd always heard so much about him as the person and breaking the color barrier and all those things. And then I got to watch the tape. And the tape is so stunning that it is almost hard to describe. I mean, it looks like somebody messed up and put a guard or a tackle in the backfield. I mean, that's really what he looked like. And even the number was 76. So you go, what is this, a trick play? Something Bill would pull out. And then they hand him the football. And you're talking about guys making business decisions. There were people finding a reason to not go tackle this big guy. He is truly one of the superstars of the history of the game. There are a lot of guys that gave their teammates a chance to tackle him first. Yeah. <laughs> but Motley was a very unselfish player. He started as a two-way player, uh, you know, defensively played linebacker, and then offensively was a blocker as much as he was a runner. So as impressive as his ball carrying was, he uh, was a very unselfish player that was that was a lead blocker and a very good one. Touchdown number one, off tackle, with Motley throwing the key block. So there's one last spot, and that spot belongs to Earl Campbell, the Tyler Rose. Earl Campbell was the 1979 National Football League Most Valuable Player. He was the Offensive Player of the Year for three consecutive seasons from 1978 through 80, and in eight seasons, Campbell gained 10,213 yards from scrimmage. The business decision coming downhill out of the backfield. We know what he was as a player, right? I mean, his thighs were that big around. When you met the guy, you felt strange because all you could do is look at his legs, you know? And it was like, it is real, you know? Look You're at right. that guy. I think one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. But boy, what an intimidating presence. Oh, my God. <laughs> you had to get him before he got going, because once he got going, uh, boy, he was, it was like a truck. What a, a tough football, and fast. If there was space, he could hit, hit it and take it the distance, and it was so hard to tackle. This guy was, was one of the toughest football players in my mind that ever played.